What do you know about Dr. Dunch? Based on the unbelievable true story. I can't make sense of this. Dr. Death. Dunch has two deaths that we know of. Starring Joshua Jackson with Christian Slater and Alec Baldwin. I am going to fix you. All episodes streaming now, only on Peacock. Streaming only on Peacock. What do you know about Dr. Dunch? He was charming, intelligent. My patients mean everything to me. Based on the unbelievable true story. I can't make sense of it. Dunch has two deaths that we know of. The state of Texas has executed people for less. It's like he knew what he was supposed to do. And he did the exact opposite. Dr. Death, starring Joshua Jackson with Christian Slater and Alec Baldwin. I am going to fix you. All episodes streaming now, only on Peacock. And now, another edition of Tony Tolato on Sci Fi Talk. Hey, this is Katie Sackoff. This is who you are. You're on Farscape. And you're listening to Sci Fi Talk. Co creators of Brooklyn. <laughs> you, gotcha. you did it too. Yeah. I was like, See? Ed, what am I promoting? <laughs> See, you did it too. Uh, All right. <laughs> okay, ready? Three, two, one. This is Mike Doherty. And this is Steve Fisher. We're the co-creators of Brown Coats Redemption, and you're li- listening to Sci-Fi Talk. Jump on the bandwagon. Everybody else has. Oh, God, another hayride. Hi, I'm Tim Daly, the voice of Superman, right here on Sci-Fi Talk. Hello, I'm Dr. Rodney McKay. David Hewlett, if you must. Hi, this is Don Davis. I'm the composer of The Matrix, The Matrix Reloaded, and The Matrix Revolutions. Hi, this is John Delancey. Kind of act to things that aren't there. Well, you know, sometimes you have that experience anyway with people that are there. <laughs> Thanks, God. <laughs> Not that bad. <laughs> In part because of the hopeful nature of Gene's vision, but also because of its message of diversity and inclusion. Victor, great to talk to you. I don't know if you remember, many years ago, we talked when you were on Mutant X. Oh my goodness, that's like a lifetime ago. I know. And that interview is still available. I'm actually doing a retrospective on Mutant X because I have all of you on tape. So it's really going to be fun. Oh, I love that. The vice president uh, on Motherland. uh, Yes. Talk about his daughter and what's kind of going on there. Uh, It it sounds like... uh, it sounds like a tough situation for him a little bit. I mean, it is a um, it is a very difficult situation just because uh, we find out that my daughter, Penelope, has um, the powers um, that witches do. So I have to struggle with the fact now that my daughter is a witch and how do I deal with that? Uh, she's going to be taken away from me. Um, she's possibly going to die fighting for the United States of America. You know, it's, as a father, um, it's a lot to struggle with. Now there was, uh, I don't want to give a spoiler, but we will see you episode two. And there is a scene that- Don't tell me, don't tell me. (laughs) There's a a scene that happens and his reaction is priceless. And it kind of reflects what you said that he's, you know, kind of going through something with his daughter. And how do you think this impacts him and with, you know, with him being vice president, too? Well, I mean, he has he has a political agenda that he needs to adhere to that is mandated for him. Um, also struggling with the feelings of being a father and, and caring and loving for your daughter, as well as the feelings of being an individual human being and struggling with those feelings. Um, so th- there's just it's it's a fully loaded situation. And obviously, you know, with that much pressure, because all of that now, especially the vice presidential umbrella creates a lot more pressure uh, to, to have to figure it all out and move a lot of chess pieces around to try and make everybody else happy and yourself happy. What's it like with these ladies? I mean, it's, it's mostly a female cast. (laughs) What's it like? I mean, that's a nice, that's a nice problem to have as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure because um, you never know, you know, what that's going to be like. Uh, it's coming onto a show in general as a, yeah. as a, you know, recurring, new recurring character. Uh, are the people on the show warm and welcoming? Um, are they not? Is there a lot of attitude? Uh, this show, there was none. Everybody was so welcoming, uh, so talented. Um, they definitely could, you could tell that they had bonded tremendously as like a family. And I think you can see that on screen, but also, 
allowing you to come in and do your thing and play and be creative and give you the space to do that as well. So it was a, it was a very, um, it was a really refreshing experience. Will we see you a couple more times during the season or how many episodes will we see you? Uh, you'll definitely see me um, uh, more than a handful of times. <laughs> ah. So is it safe to say you'll be returning to the, uh, to the fort uh, to, to see the late, to see your daughter? Oh yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot, there's a, quite a bit of stuff that happens between my daughter and I, and it's, it's uh, the writers have done a fantastic job of really kind of um, showing that connection and all the things that I just talked about, how difficult everything is and really allowing that to play out for both of us. Are you going to have any scenes with your president at all? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, she is incredible. She is incredible. I spoke yeah. to her last year, as a matter of fact. About yeah, it. so powerful, such such gravitas. She's uh, she commands um, a lot of attention, and is is you could see why she was cast as president. What's it like to play in this alternate history, where witches have played a part of our history for since the Revolutionary War and, and earlier? Yeah, I love it. I've, I've done a lot of sci-fi stuff. Um, I really like delving into that world. Uh, I'm still a big kid trapped in a man's body, so I still have a very vivid imagination. Um, I love sci-fi as a fan watching it. Um, it's, it's wonderful to be able to see how, uh, without the constraints of reality, what you can create. Your approach... I reacting to special effects uh, lots of how, green tennis balls in my world <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah i hear you so what how does it differ on this show compared to other shows you've worked on well i think these days um i guess just because i've been doing this for 20 something years um and seeing being on set shooting something and then seeing the finished product now you kind of have an idea what you're going to be reacting to and again like i said it's just about allowing yourself to be a child and and play in the sandbox and when you're a kid you have these these um, this imagination that is so huge and as we get older we're told to like bring it in bring it in bring it in be an adult uh be more serious um luckily I've never listened to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Good and for so you. I'm still that kid with that huge imagination. Uh, imagination's a wonderful thing. Yeah. I love the theme of acceptance in this show and, you know, being different. I mean, it, obviously being a witch is a metaphor for, could be for a lot of things. Sure. You know, talk about that aspect of the show. With it, It's fun and all, and, and there's magic and all these great effects, but there's a message there too. There's, there's a message overall. I mean, the show is is about fitting in. The show has aspects of that as well and um, allowing everybody from, from uh, no matter who you love, um, whether you were raised with money or without, um, they're, they're really kind of just smash all of the boundaries that you know society sometimes puts on people i mean we're really growing as a society now and moving towards being more open and accepting of everybody in every single way which i think is absolutely fantastic and they do the same thing on this show yeah you know and that actually plays into your daughter uh, as well <clears throat> excuse me there's you know she it's it could really substitute it for anything sure that she's different and you're different and it's really interesting how that all you know meshes together and how he feels about her and and it's and she's still your daughter too so that's a really interesting storyline to play through yeah there's it's it's a very tangled web mm -hmm. great to talk to you uh as i said i'm doing that special on mute next to reflect back on what you guys did i love you're no, that you're no stranger to superheroes obviously you were <laughs> one so Again, it's great to talk to you again and so glad to see that you're doing well and still out there doing it. Oh, thank you, Tony, very much. I appreciate all the, uh, the well wishes. Hi, this is Jewel State from Firefly and Serenity. And you're watching, listening. <laughs> you're not watching anything, are you? You're just listening. <laughs> I'm so used to saying, and you're watching. <laughs> Okay, let's do it again. What, what am I listening to? Sci-Fi Talk. Got it. Hi, this is Jewel State from Firefly and Serenity, and you're listening to Sci-Fi Talk. 
presented by Climate Power. America, let's do what we do best. Build. We have an opportunity to rebuild our economy, fight climate change, and create millions of jobs in the fastest growing industry in the country. Clean energy. But we must grab this moment before it slips away. American workers are ready. Now, Congress, it's up to you. We can achieve our clean energy future if we act now. Sun, surf, and seduction collide as four Americans return to exotic islands hoping their sexy romances can turn into forever. Love in Paradise, The Caribbean, a 90-day story, streaming now only on Discovery+. Plus. Start your free trial. Terms apply.